Tonight we have Ernest Varner, who we welcome as our critique artist. Ernest E. Varner graduated from the University of Tennessee at, at Chattanooga, where he studied art at the Hunter Museum of American Art. Additionally, he has studied with many of today's living masters, David LaFell, Ken Marlowe, Daniel Breen, <clears throat> Jim Shell, Richard Whitney, Mark Shatall, Peggy Baumgartner, Nelson Shanks, John De La Vega, Bert Silverman, Bart Lindstrom, and Michael Del Priori, to mention a few. Joining the military gave Varner an opportunity to pursue his passion for painting and drawing whenever his career led him. He drew great pleasure making his classroom out of the galleries and museums throughout the world, from the Smithsonian in Washington, D.C., to the Louvre in Paris, France. Lieutenant Colonel Varner proudly served in the military and upon his retirement was awarded the Legion of Merit for his service. Varna is a member of the Portrait Society of America, a jurid member of the Portrait Society of Atlanta, and is a past president of the Portrait Society of Atlanta. He now serves on the advisory board of the Portrait Society of Atlanta. And I, I started to say gallery, gallery 4463, but I think they've, they've not, they're no longer around. His paintings and prints can be found in private and public uh, collections throughout the United States and abroad to include the Booth Western Art Museum in Cartersville, Georgia. He was one of 16 artists who were featured in the Booth Western Arts Museum, the Black West exhibit in 2009. Since then, he has been in several exhibitions, given lectures, demonstrations, and was showcased in a one-man exhibit in 2010. Varna is also honored by having one of his images selected as part of the Booth's permanent collection. Ernest was personally selected by the U.S. Ambassador of Botswana, Africa to display several of his original paintings at the embassy and ambassador's estate in Botswana for three years. Varna was also invited to Botswana as an ambassador of goodwill to teach, lecture, and demonstrate his skills before various audiences throughout the art community. Afterwards, Varner was invited to the White House and State Department to participate in the 40th anniversary of the Arts, Art in Ambassadory, um, Embassy Program. The two events recognize artists who have contributed to the success of the program. Varner is currently an art instructor at Kennesaw State University, the College of Continuing and Professional Education, and teaches art at various art centers throughout Greater Atlanta. Varna continuously strives to be the best artist he can be, both spiritually and skillfully. Varna has often been quoted as saying, we are most like our creator when we are being created. Tonight, I present Ernest Varna. Uh, thank you very much, Laura. You're welcome. We're gonna have to get a copy of that. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. <laughs> You got it. Uh, I want to start off by saying this. I was going to write it on a board, but uh, we don't have one uh, readily available. Um, I use this in my class when I'm talking to my students. It's called the creative process. I didn't write it, someone else did. There are six steps in the creative process that most artists go through. Number one, they think to themselves, wow, this is awesome when they're getting ready to do a painting or what have you. Number two, whoa, this is tricky. <laughs> Number three, this is crap. <laughs> Number four is a really scary one. Number four, I am crap. Mm -hmm. Number five, this might be okay. And number six, this is awesome. I encourage you to keep that in mind when you're working on a, a project I still go through those. Uh, the only difference after having uh, been around a, a, a much longer time is that you know that generally you can fix stuff. And so that's what I know that I can do. So when I get to the point where I say to myself, this is crap. And just before I get to the point where I'm about to say I am crap, I think to myself, I can fix this. And I hang in there. And generally that is the case. I want to show you a painting behind me and let me know if this is in the right place. Can we cut that one? No. Can you get it closer? 
I've got about four of my images here that I'll just show you to get an idea of some of what I do. This was really done about six years ago, seven years ago, something like that. This is Mina Rao, one of my uh, students in the class. Uh, as you might guess, she is an Indian woman. And I did this painting of her. And I told her when I did it, I said, you know, I need a painting, another painting that I can do and I keep. And I had to say that to Mina because I know that if I had not, she would have told me, yeah, but change this and make that right. And kind of like my wife, that's too big or that's too small or, or something. And of course, wanting to live a, a long and happy life, I would make those changes. But this one of Mina, I really enjoyed doing. And uh, hopefully as you can see, I am really uh, focusing on those things that you might look for. She has some really lovely warm cheeks, uh, and wonderful nose, beautiful eyes and beautiful hair. And then when I got down to the sorry, I think I'm saying that right, isn't that? Okay, I've got a nod. I told her, I said, there is no way in the world I'm gonna spend the rest of my life putting everything in the sorry that she had on. So this is probably half of the beauty that was in the sari that she was wearing. Same thing with the earrings. Um, but I had so much fun um, doing this, uh, painting Mina. And uh, one of these days I said, you know, we can talk and maybe you can own it. But right now I am loving having the ability to be able to take this to classes such as this or workshops or what have you. And then I've got three more images. Can you, you can, mm -hmm. okay, good. The first one I want to mention, should I, can I go sure. over? That'd be great. The first one I want to mention is this one. This one was at the Booth Museum and it is called Waiting on the Buffalo. Uh, back in the olden days, there were slaves that would run away and they may end up at Indian reservations and some Indians would take them in. And so this is what I'm depicting with this particular painting. And there may be Buffalo soldiers that would see these uh, Indians or um, African-Americans who were on the Indian reservations. That was in a museum. Marry them yes. and produce children. And this is what I'm, um, I'm showing here. If you look at the bottom, you'd see that she's holding a hat. That's a Buffalo soldier hat. And she's probably waiting on her father to return. This is one of those um, good things that happened back then in the olden days. I had so much fun painting that. Um, is that the one in the museum or is that this is the, No, this is the, this, this did, uh, was on display at some point in time in the museum. The one that they bought um, was called, hmm, It was called something, I'm sure. <laughs> it was called something, and I'll tell you what that is in a, in a moment. Uh, a noble past is what it was uh, called. And it depicted um, Buffalo soldiers uh, and Zulu warriors together, indicating that our, our, our noble history as warriors did not start with the Buffalo soldiers. It actually went way back to the kings and queens of Africa. This, these two actually are just demonstrations uh, using students that are in my class. Um, this was uh, Joe and this was Carly. And I just brought them to show that um, there's just different ways I paint. This one's more tonal. This one has more uh, color in it and uh, gives people an idea of you know, how, I paint, how I paint today. Um, my Instagram uh, page is E.E. Vaughner. If you go there, you'll see a number of other paintings that I have that'll show you how I painted, um, how I'm painting today and how I painted yesterday. Okay, and I'm gonna ask you, I'm, I, I generally ask um, people, what were they shooting for? Uh, and that helps me to know what you were trying to do. So I'm gonna ask that of Laura, you said that's a little history behind this one. Yeah, you don't oh. want to go up here. Yeah, I'll talk about your history. Talk about my history. Yeah. Um, this is kind of small here. You can see a photograph here. Okay. Yes. And that is of a painting. Okay. Um, the painting is probably. Sure, sure. That's what I'm going to 
this one's up here. This small, small little painting. Mm -hmm. It's this one over here. Okay. Uh, the painting itself is probably 30 by 40. It's okay. pretty good size. And I, I got to take this down. And the, this person, her name is Colleen. She's a good friend of mine, was married to the person that did this painting. And unfortunately, he passed away, sadly, of Agent Orange. Uh, oh, okay. You know, uh, cancer from that. And Steve was a good landscape painter, but he really wasn't much of a portrait painter. And as you can see from this, the I can share it with them too. The dress and the background are quite nice, but mm -hmm. the face and the hands were just didn't cut it. Okay. So when he passed away, Colleen asked me to paint the face, repaint the face on the painting. And I had it in my possession for 10 years. And when I finally looked at it, I realized the only way to do that would be to sand it down. And that just seemed like desecration on his work. So I told her that I, I didn't think I would do that. And so this is produced, that's actually the size of her head on the page. Um, and we were working from this reference. She was an actor in, here in Atlanta. And uh, that's a headshot, which is not necessarily the best references. Of course, I had to add the top of her head. But I just didn't want to touch Steve's painting. So I had um, my framer take it off the uh, stretcher sticks and roll it. And then I created this, which she hasn't seen yet. Okay. And so, you know, it's just, it's, it's, I just, you know, it's already under a frame. I can't correct it, but whatever you tell me. <laughs> yeah, because I was going to tell you, I, I, off the bat, I had about 12 things I was going to say you might want to reconsider. <laughs> Okay, sure, show that to That's the camera Yeah, I know. Yeah. You want to see That's that? good. Yeah, just let me see it for a minute. Yeah. And since I know her, I sort of, you know. Okay, well, I think you've done a wonderful job. Well, thank um, you. I, I just, I'm trying to think if, if you had not framed it, what I would say. Um, yeah. But just looking at it, I think you've done a, a, a wonderful job, especially with what you have, because you don't have any really good lights and shadows, so you're working basically from um, someone had a uh, did a photograph of her, and it looks like it was head on. Mm -hmm. But you've gotten a lot of wonderful form uh, in using this. I think that's really great. You add the rest of her head, and it's like really great with the hair uh, and the neck and the uh, what's this sternoclavicle mastoid area. That's really wonderful. Um, nose. Great, great, nice. So I try to tell uh, my, my students when they're doing, especially with the older person doing the lines in the face here, mm -hmm. the camera has one eye and it does not see the way we see. And so don't make these too deep in the face and you've done a wonderful job at keeping her nice and young and, and doing that. Um, I think it's great. Love the colors uh, that you've used. I love the fact that you, at the neck and the neck recedes a little bit and the face comes forward um, and the nose is um, nicely uh, up in the air 3D. You can see the form is what I'm trying to say about that. So that's really great. And I love her eyes. I love the fact that you open her eyes a little bit more. That's nice. Uh, on this one, her eyes is closed just a little mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you open them uh, some. So I didn't miss that. So um, other than all of those things I was going to tell you that you need to correct, I think it's really nice. Thank you so much, Ernest. You're quite welcome. Mm -hmm. well, it was worth it to bring it to the Sharon Matisoff? Yes, I am here. Say hello to Ernest. Hi, Ernest. Hello, Sharon. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am fine. Uh, I'm looking at this lovely uh, image that you have here. Who is this uh, young man? Right. She, she said the name. Sharon, who, who is this is what he asked. Oh, uh, he's, he right now, he's the manager at my local Staples. And oh, okay. um, I also did an oil painting of him that was accepted into the show. This is him in a different mood and a different pose. Oh, okay. So let me ask you a question uh, because I don't have the image. I, I can't compare um, him to the image. But, so let me ask you this question. What were you shooting for uh, with this image? 
Well, he's a very young, good looking, vigorous young man. And um, I wanted to show he's very attractive in a, in a, um, an unself-conscious way. And he has beautiful skin tones. I wanted to show that he's confident in himself. And uh, he also knows he's attractive, but he doesn't, he's comfortable with himself. He's very comfortable with himself. Normally he wears his hair in a, a, a ski cap, but mm -hmm. when he, when we went to, when we had a photo shoot, I asked him, can you take your cap off? And all this magnificent hair puffed out. And that's I thought, right. oh, that's, that's going to be so much fun to paint. So um, I just wanted to catch his vitality and his youth and his good looks. Okay. Okay. Well, it looks like you're doing that. Um, it's very, very colorful. Yes, uh, I... Go ahead, please. Oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have interrupted. I was just going to say, I'm pushing to make my work more impressionistic. So okay. I'm aiming toward making the colors pop more. And this is this was one of my more aggressively colorful portraits. Okay. So let me, let me share this with you. Uh, thanks for sharing that information with me. It gives me an idea of where you're going. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is not... Um, I never think when I uh, critique that this is the gospel according to St. Ernest. Um, <laughs> the things I'm sharing with you, some things just to consider. Uh -huh. uh, and if they work for you, yay. And if they don't work for you, um, double yay. Uh -huh. um, because I, I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, as I'm looking at him, uh, one of my, my questions would be, um, one eye looks a little larger than the other. And that's, and I'm going to say on the left or the right side of the canvas um, as we are looking at it. So if I say right, um, I mean the right side of the canvas as we are looking at it, okay? Okay. Okay, good. His right eye looks a little larger than his le left eye. Uh -huh. Just kind of keep that in mind okay. while you're doing it. The other thing too is normally, um, normally our Adam's apple will be lined up with our center line I guess it depends on how much you turn your head. So just look at that um, mm -hmm. when you're looking at the way he's, he turns his head. Mm -hmm. um, and if I, were, if I were painting this, his Adam's apple, um, I would tone it down just a hair because we want that to go back. We don't want that to get anybody. I shouldn't even see his Adam's apple. I see, yes. I do you know what I mean? Yes, I do. But that's not, that's not the subject. So um, I shouldn't even see it to ask the question, is it going left or right or up or down or whatever, whatever, because that's not part of the subject. And all that means is just toning it down just a little bit. I'm putting mm -hmm. my finger over it. And as I'm putting my finger over it, it kind of goes away. And that's wonderful because it takes me right back up to his face. And that's where I want to be. Yes. Okay. When you're doing uh, uh, working more impressionistically and using more color and stuff, Keep in mind this now, I'm going back to what I said, not a, the gospel according to Ernest, but keep in mind, you know, you're still trying to represent the person showing form, what have you, if that's your goal. I'm looking mm -hmm. at, the, and, and I don't know what it looks like to see your painting in person. So I'm just going with the image in front of me, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm looking at the green up at his, um, on his forehead on the right side of the canvas. Mm -hmm. And that may be a little stronger than, than I would want it if I were painting it. Down below, you know, you've got it nice and comfortable and that's really wonderful. It's not standing out maybe more than it should stand out. So re-look at that when you're looking at it. Mm -hmm. Okay, some of the things I love about it is I see the things that you were talking about in terms of his personality and stuff. I think that's really wonderful. I see the form in terms of planes heads and stuff like that on the left cheek, right cheek, what have you. I think that's really great. And they're subtle enough not to jump at you and smack you upside the head, but mm -hmm. they're still there. That's how, that's how you, you see that form and that's really wonderful. I uh -huh. love the way that you've got his hair done and then some of it kind of disappears. I don't know if you plan to keep that on the, uh, on the right side of the canvas. You know, that's where your shadow are. So you may get a little stronger with that since it is, is on the right side of your camera. I uh -huh. love the way you've got his body uh, 
uh, structured and the colors that you have in that and some of it's repeated in this hair. That's being very creative in the way that you, um, that you do that. Uh -huh. Do you have any questions about it? Well, okay, I want to say one other thing too. Uh-huh. Um, Okay, so I want to say one other thing. On the right side of his nose, mm -hmm. it's a really strong, um, um, uh, okay, what, what, what word do I want to use? Uh, line around his nose, his nostril. Uh huh. Okay, that too, you might want to soften that a little bit so it's not standing out, not really getting my attention. I don't want to look at his eyes and then say, oh my God, look at that nostril. That's really nice. <laughs> I'm supposed to be up at his, his beautiful eyes that you uh, you have there. So those things are just some uh, some some little things to to look at and, and think about while you're fine tuning it. And like I said, they're not the gospel according to Ernest Bonner. There are some things that if they fit what you're trying to say, um, then then that's good. Now now, is there anything you want to ask me about in relation uh -huh. to him? No, not not really. Um, you you uh, touched on the things that were bothering me about my painting, so I, I can't really argue with anything you said. Uh, and it's helpful. It is helpful. Okay. Good. I like the way she's done her that hair treatment on that side. I don't know. And so, you know, I, yeah. I I I I I have two feelings about that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna share. Uh, the boss here, I said she likes the way. You, you've done the uh, hair treatment on the um, on the right side of the canvas. Uh -huh. So I'm going to say this for this reason. I like that too, but I would shift it to the. Oh, where the light side. is coming uh, in. Say again, please. You would shift it to the side with the light coming through. Right, because the light is on that side, and you got the yes. shadows. And so I would have. All it means is that. I would have the more detail and, and, and more, more form, darker, what have you, on the left side of the canvas, and then it will fit with the shadow side. And then what she's saying, I love that too. I would shift that to the right side of the canvas. Negative, shift that to the left side of the canvas. Uh, it would be more in keeping with your light source. Great, yeah, that's, that's, that's a great observation. Thank you, that's very helpful. Okay, yay. <clears throat> okay, is that? Yep. Let's okay, see. if there's no questions, I think we're going to move on. I don't know the best way, maybe just to hold this up. Can you tell me if it's getting in? There you go. Okay. There you go. I, I guess I should explain first. Okay. Yeah, because I want to. I want to know. What, you see, these are yours. Yeah. I want to know what you were shooting for. Well, I wanted to capture my great niece, and so I have all these photos, and none of them have good lighting, and. I, I you know, found one that was the closest and I started with my sketch before I did the painting. Okay, I want to do something. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want the... Um... Oh, don't worry about it. Seriously, okay. don't worry about it. Okay. Um, and then eventually, you know, I got, I got into the painting part, but what I don't like about what I've done and what's frustrating is it almost, it just looks like a copied a photograph and it's not a painting so much. There's no character in it. It's just kind of bland to me. So, okay, um, I don't see the bland, but okay. Um, <laughs> the uh, I, I I love the drawing and I love the uh, uh, the painting. What's what's a little nicer about the drawing is that your um, I'm about to say your pencil strokes, um, your um, the way you're using the pencil um, in it uh, helps with the character. Uh, of it uh, it gives it movement mm -hmm. okay and um, and so I, I like that in the hair and what have you in the face and what have you it gets it gives it movement because it's not finished and and oftentimes when we don't finish something the uh, the person that's looking at it finishes finishes it in their own mind their own eye and so that's one of the things that's really wonderful um, about this. I mean, I can just about see her mouth moving and she's about to say something like, uh, thanks, Ernest, I like that <laughs> observation. I don't know why I hear that coming from her. Um, but so I wanted to mention that about her. Uh, now, let me say just something about the painting. Um, I think that's a difference between this and that. 
uh, her mouth is a little bigger he here than it is there. So just keep that in consideration, especially with the size of her nose. So she just, that's probably why I see a little bit more character mm -hmm. in this too, because there's a larger mouth and I see a lot more with, I don't know if I would be this strong with the, uh, the cheek in terms of the color. And one of the things I like about this is I can imagine her hair coming here, here her hair is doing this. And that takes my attention down there. True, that's and a good point. Where, where, where it is beautiful and really artistic and I love that, but I wanna stay here. Mm -hmm. And I come down here and I say, wow, that's really wonderful down here. And I'm going to stay down here a while when I really want to be here. Some great, beautiful blue eyes, something that you can't do in this. Her eyes are very expressive in this and in that. So that's really wonderful. In fact, this whole area here is repeated here. That's wonderful. I think your challenge is making that a little too small mm -hmm. because like this really, really supports that. And I love the way you've handled the whites. They're not quite white uh, in the background. That's um, that's wonderful. Also, I love the color. It feels like a little girl. Um, and I think that's what you want to do. I'm anxious to go home. And I've got a goddaughter named Reagan. And so I'm anxious to go home and, and work on her just looking at this. I love your cast shadow. That's wonderful. Uh, they are nice and, and, and warm and have light, uh, light to them, uh, life to them also. Okay. So anything okay. else, I, lo I love the way uh, you're creating the form where this is going back, the, the face part is coming forward. That's just wonderful also. Okay, well, no, that, that, that helps a lot. Some things I had not thought about at all. Oh, yay. Yeah. Okay, let's see, we'll go online again and okay. see who we've got here. Share content. Rose. Let's do Rosie. Rosie, are you there? Yes. Rosie, Ernest, Ernest, Rosie. Rosie, hello. How are you? Where hello. are you, Rosie? Where am I? Athens, yes. Georgia. Athens, Georgia? Yes. Okay. I know where Athens is. Okay, good. Okay, so tell me something about this gentleman and what you... Okay, it, it, happens to, it happens to be my brother, and he was sitting on my back porch, and the light was hitting his face so nicely, and his arms that I just had to take a photo and try to paint it. So my main goal was this was the light and shadow. And okay. You, Rosie, you had emailed some details about your working techniques. Can you explain those to Ernest too? Oh, yes, I did. A, I, it's actually done on a, a cold press watercolor paper. I did a watercolor underpainting. Then I added some clear uh, Liquitex gesso and then I finished it with uh, a variety of soft pastels. Oh, okay. Wow. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. um, now tell me, tell me this, what you're shooting for in terms of the technique to use it. I mean, it's, it's very, uh, very loose. And I want to know, is that what you're shooting for? Yes. Or is that yes. part of the yeah. underpainting? And is that what you're shooting for? Yes. Okay, and so without having the image, uh, let me share uh, this with you. Um, first of all, I think you're, you're getting that. I, I, I'm thank you for telling me it's in pastels. I love using soft pastels um, when I'm drawing or painting or doing portraits or what have you. In fact, I was taught a long time ago um, by Ken Marlowe and um, Oh, um, Daniel Green and, and some people along that line that uh, pastel and oil paint are basically the same, except one's a dry medium and right. the other's a wet medium. But um, Ken was saying you post, you're supposed to put a stroke down and leave it. That's what's nice about pastel. You right. can't do a whole lot of blending with that. Okay, I guess you can. But um, when I'm using pastel, I don't do a lot of blending. In fact, I was taught this. Uh, let's say if you're putting down pastel one and then you put down pastel three, uh, some people will say, yay, and I blend them together and I get pastel two. I was taught, no, I'm pausing for effect. I was taught you find pastel number two, go to the store, whatever, whatever, find pastel number two and put that in the middle and then it's already blended. And then you get that really wonderful, fresh quality 
of working with pastels. So something to consider. Anyway, okay. So now, again, I don't have the, uh, the photo in front of me and I don't have the painting in front of me. So I'm gonna say some things that may be a little different from what you see looking at the, um, the painting in front of you. Um, in, in the, um, the idea of creating form, be careful that nothing stays flat unless that's what you're trying to encourage. Like on the right side, you've got the light and maybe the photograph is very flat, but keep in mind, you're creating an apple. Uh, that's what I tell my student. An apple, when you look at a face, his face, his whole head is an apple. It's going from the dark side all the way to the light side, which means that's how you make it round. Keep that in, in mind while you're doing that. It'll help you to keep everything uh, round. In fact, uh, his nose is an apple, uh, meaning it's a round form uh, mm -hmm. with two nostrils that are round. The mouth barrel is an apple. The eye is actually an apple when you get that small. The neck is really a cylinder, but arms are cylinders, et cetera, et cetera. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Okay. So sometimes when we have a photograph, we don't have the luxury of having the person in front of us and looking at them with, with our two eyes. So we have to paint as if that person is actually in front of us so that you know that those, those um, things are going to uh, turn. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, up by his nose, his smile line, that's another example. Keep in mind that that's not a, a cut in his face and it may not be that way where you are looking at the actual painting but that has some form to it also. So you want that to, to turn and not just look like a, like it, that smile line is the cut, a cut in his face. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, the other things I do, and trust me, I, I still mess up uh, today, but at least I know to, to look for it. Whenever I'm doing one eye, I do the other one at the same time. Uh, and then I can go back and work on them. But I do that so that I know that they're the same size uh, and they're looking in the same direction. And one of the things you can do, I'm not seeing it as, again as clear as you are, put your hand over one eye and see where that eye, like I've got my hand right now over the, um, over the right eye on the right side of the canvas. And I'm looking to where the left eye is looking. Then I put my hand over the left eye and I see where the right eye is looking. They should be looking in the same place. So if you do that and that's happening, then that's, um, that's great. Um, so now do you, okay, one other thing too, be careful with the nose, you don't, the nostril of the nose, uh, you don't want the nostril, the inside of the nostril to look flat. Uh, so you want something, uh, normally if I'm painting a nostril in oil, I'm using uh, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson and uh, those two are, are, are put those together and you get a hole <clears throat> in whatever you're doing i hope that's communicating there's a hole in whatever you're doing it's not reflecting like it's absorbing the light so it looks like a hole so whenever you're doing something like that you want it to go in and not look like um, it's not actually a cavity a hole it's kind of like the corner you have on the right side of the mouth that looks like a hole. Am I making sense? Yes, yes. A hole is good when it's supposed to be a hole there. Is that making, uh -huh. is that English? Uh, people, <laughs> Siva says not Indian, so <laughs> close, close to English. Is there any question you have of it um, that you want to ask me? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think you've covered it very well. Thank you. Am I seeing you there? Is that you? Can you wave? Yeah, yeah that is you. Yay, hello there. Okay, good, good. Well, if I'd known that, I'd say, show me the picture and then I might've seen more, but you, it's too small, so I probably wouldn't have seen anything anyway. So anyway, listen, I'd love to see this when you, when you finish. I, I think you've got um, a wonderful start on it. And those things, uh, if you were listening earlier, are just some things that I'm saying for you to consider. Uh, right. They're not anything uh, gospel according to Ernest Vaughn. It's just something you consider. You know more of what you're shooting for and what you've got in your mind than, than I do. Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay. You're going to hold those? Yeah, I'll just okay, hold them. I'm going to put that, that there and we might go back Can to we that. see them on the screen? Somewhat? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. This is another of the same little girl. I was mm -hmm. trying a drawing and I, I can see where I went horribly wrong with it. <laughs> with this wandering eye over here. Okay. But um, it was just very difficult to, to come up from this angle and try. Mm. Okay. So try something. And, and I would not say horribly wrong. I, I wouldn't use that. I think this eye is just a little larger than it. Uh, probably should be um, is what giving you a little bit of problem. And then what's happening is you're losing some of the head up here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were to, mm, I don't have any, who's got a pencil hiding around doing nothing? Uh, any, anything that, that um, I can measure with. That's close enough for government work. Okay, so if we look at um, this, and this, and we go up to the eyebrow there. And so let's see where that started. It started about here and then up here. So if you go from here to here and that there. So that's good. But see, then let's, let's go here. This looks like it's about the same from here to the eyebrow. And so let's go from here to here and here to there. That's the top of that. You don't have enough head here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna go here to here, and then I'm gonna come down here, and it goes way up there. So I'm gonna come way up here, and I'm gonna go here to here. You have that, but it doesn't come up here. Okay. Okay. So that's that's cutting too quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, that cutting too quickly is making this look larger than it should be. What have you? So I think if I were to do this. It looks a little different than I still a little large, but it's just one of those things what happened, especially if you're doing all this freehand, we run into that. Um, I think she looks lovely. I love like a, the other one. I love the way you do your uh, handle a pencil and stuff. And then the way you've got the white uh, chalk or white pencil in that too. That's absolutely wonderful. Okay. Well, that, that's, that pointed out something I had not seen at all. Well, again, what's, what's nice Thank about you. that is uh, we can often see um, things in other people's work that we can't see in ours. Gordon Whitmore um, lived in Chattanooga. He was the president of the Society of America. And um, every time I go up to Gordon, uh, I'm from Chattanooga. Every time I go up to Gordon, Gordon would teach me something. Gordon was also uh, very... Um, very comfortable with himself and what he was doing. I go up there and he said, Ernest, you teach. He said, okay, something is wrong with this picture. I can't figure out what's wrong with this picture. And, you know, I'm looking at Gordon like, okay, he's the king of, uh, one of the kings of paintings. And I look at it and I say, oh, it's the eyes upside down or something crazy like that. But something I looked at and I said, and he said oh, that's it. He said, you know, I kept looking at it, but I just didn't see it. I'm saying that to say, in many cases, it's hard to see in our own work, but we can see it in somebody else's work. Um, so, uh, great. great. Okay. If you can show this handsome gentleman here, I wanted to say something about him that might help uh, someone out there learning to paint. I use it in my class um, a lot. Pretty good. Okay, so what I suggest to my students, first off, learn to create form. Don't get so caught up in, oh my God, I see people using 3,000 colors and I want to get to the point where I can use 3,000 colors uh, and um, et cetera, et cetera. I said, first learn to create form and the rest of that will come. Well, this gentleman, now do not count his shirt looking like it's a little bit yellow, yellow ochre or something, because this is a camera, this is a demonstration I did for my students. And this camera is something I had used and. And then I said, oh, I'll reuse it and what have you. So I, I get to uh, cheat with that. Uh, but this is three colors. If you count white as a color, this is ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and white. And that's it. Um, so I told him, I said, you can use those three colors and create an image in creating form. And it'll look absolutely beautiful. And you don't have to. 
do all that other stuff. And if you can do that, then when it comes to me teaching you how to use color and stuff like that, it's a lot easier to do that because you can already uh, create form. So if you look at this gentleman, it looks like he may have black and brown and what have you. And if you think ultramarine blue and as a blue, you probably figured that out all by yourself. And burnt sienna is an orange. It's a brownish orange or something. And so they're complementary colors. So you put them together, you get black, you get grays and all kinds of other wonderful things. I got all the other people in here shaking their head. Yes, 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 yes. So I guess I'm in, in the right direction. And then you get the form going where his neck goes back, his face comes forward. He's got some blue eyes, beautiful hair with all kind of wonderful stuff in it. And this is um, um, the brush strokes in it are a, a, a little loose because I wanted to show them you could do that too. So I don't have it so, uh, so uh, well blended that you cannot see the brush strokes in it. But I wanted to show this uh, background is blue. And like I say, okay, let me get away with this uh, yellow shirt. And that's actually um, two colors and white that I, uh, that I use for that. Any questions about it? Yay, okay. I got some thumb, I got a what, one, two, three, four. I got 10 thumbs up, so okay, I'll take them. Oh, okay, lovely okay. young lady. This one, um, this is done by Elska Wilton and she lives in the Netherlands. Okay. And she did email that she would not be staying up this late because it's like tomorrow morning there, but she will watch it. Uh, okay. Your comments on Zoom. And I don't have her reference photos okay. either. Okay, and her name is Elska. Elska, not Elsa. <clears throat> Elska. Okay, Elska. Uh, I am looking at this young, lovely uh, young lady. Wow, this is. Uh, I think this is really, really nice. Okay, okay. Let's see. Okay, and I'm just looking. So let me just look. Yeah, I know it's beautiful. Okay, so again, let me share something for you to consider. Um, okay, so <clears throat> you have a lot of detail in the face, uh, which I think is wonderful. I'm looking at the uh, flowers on her head and you might want a little more in the flowers on her head. I'm only saying that to say, uh, I. I I leave the face and then I go down to the body or I go up to the flowers and I see um, it looks like they are not as finished. So just something to consider, maybe they, uh, maybe they are not. Um, on her nose, the light that's on her nose. Um, <clears throat> and then I got to do a sidebar. I'm, I'm just going with what I'm seeing uh, in front of me. It may be different if I were there with you looking at the original. So keep in mind, uh, that's the case. The light on her nose is a little lighter than, than I would think you would want it. Um, it's, it's because it's a little lighter and it's so uniform across, that's the only word that comes to my mind right now, it makes it look like it's flat. Uh, typically, uh, the, the form of the nose is going to be uh, a kind of a cylinder going up after you leave the ball of the nose. Uh, so keep that, keep that in mind while you're looking at it so that it won't look flat. Am I making sense in, in that? Okay, um, I wanna caution you this, no matter what the photograph or maybe if you're doing this in person, looks like her teeth look like uh, they're darker than they should be. Uh, and not only darker than they should be, they look red. Again, it may be just what I'm seeing. And she's too young. I mean, her teeth probably are whiter than most people who go to the dentist and have them whitened. Um, so keep that in mind. Now, I know that, uh, that, that her mouth may be casting a shadow on them, but you don't want to use any red in any area other than the gums and the sides of her teeth on the inside of the mouth because it makes them look like they're bleeding. Um, and so this lovely young lady, you don't want that to look uh, look that way. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, beautiful hair. OMG, uh, beautiful hair. I love the way that you've got the form in her face too. I know I mentioned the nose, yay. Okay, but I love the way you got the form in her face. Her cheeks are just really uh, nice and cheeky. I you know it's like, what does that mean in English? They're nice and round and, and, and full. I think that's really wonderful. Beautiful nose. Um, oh, I wish I were there looking at the, uh, the actual, the, the original painting. I will say this, um, the ear on the right side of the canvas, uh, I would tone that down just a hair, just really just a hair. Um, if, I, if you were in my class and I came by and saw it, and I said, did you tone that down? And you said, yeah, just a hair. I said, okay. Uh, the reason is because I wouldn't want that to compete with the face. The face is supposed to um, um, stand out on its own. Beautiful eyes. I don't see, and maybe it's too small. I don't see the highlight on the eye on the left side of the canvas. I do see it on the right side of the canvas. So I'm, I'm, I'm um, paused in great anticipation for you to put the highlight on the uh, left side of the cameras, but the one on the right side of the cameras is absolutely beautiful. Oh, oh, now go. they show me that I can bring them up and now they show me that. Thank you very much. Now, not to mention that I probably should know that. Okay, so good. Now it's really big in front of me. Yeah, put that highlight, I'm waiting on the highlight on the uh, left side of the cameras. And if you already have it in there, it needs to be a little stronger. Keep in mind that on the nose, even if you're working from a photograph, you're standing in front of the person, if you have uh, a highlight on both sides of the nose, even if the camera says that, then um, it's going to make it look flat. So uh, keep that in mind when you're doing that. The teeth, like I said, oh, you, you, um, she's too young to drink coffee, so I'm not going to even uh, give that to her. But uh, her teeth, you want them to be... Uh, a little lighter. They don't have to be very, very light for them to read white, but you don't want any any color in it other than uh, something that's off white. Uh, it makes such a big difference. Uh, the nostrils are great. Uh, they go back. That's what they're supposed to do. That's what I was sharing with somebody earlier. Uh, beautiful eyes. Uh, and they're very subtle, even in the tear ducts, kind of the way they're supposed to be. Uh, oh, I like the forehead. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I'm going to say this too. Keep in mind, this is what I'm seeing. Okay, on the <laughs> on the left side of her face where the light is, um, be careful not going all the way to the edge with the light. You might want just a little bit of uh, transition value. Uh, it could even be uh, in color or blue or something like that. Uh, you've got some green down by her looks green down by her um, mouth on the right side so that that will turn a little bit at the edge. I would not want that to be look flat going all the way out. Um, okay, I'm gonna make it small to do it again. Um, wonderful, I'm assuming you haven't finished with the arms. So when you finish with them, you'll get the uh, some, a little bit more value on the show, a little bit more form in the dress, just a little bit because you don't want the eyes to go down there and stay uh, too long. Okay, so I know you're not there, I'm gonna ask anyway. Do you have any questions? No? Okay, <laughs> then I'm gonna turn it back over to the president. Okay. This is one Donna Leonard sent in, mm -hmm. and she's not, she was babysitting. She probably is not gonna be online yeah, she in said, time. She said that she might not be. Okay. Okay. Um, and I'm looking at this one. Um, do, you, do you know the name of it or what uh, have you? Let me go check real quick. I I, I, she said. But... Um, no. Okay, good. I'll use that name. <laughs> sure. Okay, so we have this beautiful uh, young lady in red and blue and orange and in the background, every color in the rainbow. Uh, that's just absolutely, absolutely beautiful. Okay. 
you want to blow it up, you can do that too. Thank you so much, because uh, I would not. Yeah, but I'm trainable. I I, I remember. Okay, so uh, now let me ask you: when when I blow this up, they see it blown up too. Yeah. I okay. See good. It like you're seeing it. Okay. Good. 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 Thank you. Okay, so lovely young lady. Um, wow. Okay. So let me uh, let me look. Okay, so maybe um, just a couple of things uh, uh, to consider. Okay, uh, one is whenever we um, whenever we're doing something, unless it is flat, um, especially like in portraits or something like that, we do not keep the same consistency and value all the way across. Now, again, just like I said about all the other painting, I'm looking at this, it may not look like that in, in person, but I'm looking at the mouth. If you look at the mouth um, from one end to the other end, that there has to be some variations in that so that uh, it makes a part of the mouth go back, like the corners would end up being darker than the, the part in here and make it go back. So just keep that in mind. And if it looks that way, um, it, like I say, it may not look that way in person, but just keep that in mind. If, if you were just to light it up a little bit in the, in the center or vary that in the center, uh, it'll give it a little bit more form, a little bit more depth and the sides going back and then the, uh, the front of it coming, uh, com coming forward. Uh, there's probably was no light, so I don't see any light in the eye. And that can easily uh, happen when you're when you're doing something. Um, okay. Um, I would I would look for a little bit more um, form in the fold in this blue uh, part of the chest. I am not sure what the image looked like that you were doing, but I would look for a little bit more form in that if I were doing it, or just, I would have just painted that flat so it wouldn't have drawn any attention. If you could imagine, I'm gonna put my fingers over it. I know you guys won't see it, uh, but if that was just flat, then that would not draw my attention to it at all. Uh, there's enough really beautiful um, sculpted work down below to draw your attention. So I, I might've changed that. Again, this is just something that I'm saying, uh, this is not the gospel according to Ernest Barner. Uh, I love the colors that you're using. I love the fact that you're mixing colors. Some people have a problem with that. They wouldn't use a violet looking um, color along with an orange, uh, but I, I love color. And so I believe that you can do that kind of thing, especially if you've been like to Africa. I went to Africa as mentioned by Laura earlier and I've been to two or three places in Africa and they look at color differently than we do. And a lot of that is because they got the animals and what have you there, and they're seeing all kinds of colors with the zebras and the lions and tigers and bears. I don't know if there's any bears in Africa, but they're probably, they're probably polka dot or something like that. Um, so I came back from there, and that's when I did those two uh, other Longest Miles paintings, and they're reflective of uh, a lot of different color and a lot of different patterns that I would not have seen in my painting if I had not gone to Africa and saw something different. So they, they're into using a whole a bunch of color that um, that they would use. Uh, she told me about how she did the, that back. Yeah, Seth Haverkamp. She said, I think she learned some of that from him, but I'm looking at that thinking, I don't have a clue as to how I would do that unless I got um, a little bitty brush and a lot of coffee. And I don't drink, so, I, so it had to be coffee or something. And I would be there dabbing it and having fun with it. Um, that's all I, I have that I guess I would say about that. I, I love the way this young lady uh, looks. And just like any other artist, I see her with one earring and she may have had one earring or it looks like that other one is in, inside the fold there. Um, but beautiful, lovely uh, painting. You're gonna count the, you know, what's, what's, what's crazy about this, um, 
I have one young lady in my class. I'm not going to mention that her name is Jane. And she's an engineer. And if there's 7 million dots in there, she would count them and put all of them in there. Um, I'm just saying, I'm sure Jane won't see this. If she does, she'll beat me. And, and mention in showing this one, this was a demonstration class also, that uh, Steve was one of my heroes when it comes to, especially doing still life. I mean, he'll, he's, uh, I used to say this about Ken Marlowe. Uh, I studied with Ken and actually studied, uh, had some private lessons with Ken. And um, if Ken painted an apple, you could eat it. <laughs> I mean, it, uh, it was just that delicious and that real. And I realized, uh, and study with the way he did it, he, he'd have the apple there, forget the apple, he'd have a fish there and he'd be painting the fish and it would be a live, it wouldn't be a live fish. It would be a real fish is what I want to say there. And if the fish got too old, he'd go get another fish and put it there and paint it. That's how real his stuff uh, was. And that's how I, I see your stuff. Um, can this you is something I did for class. Can you um, hold it up a little bit so we can right. see you and the painting? Yeah, just kind of hold it up. Hold it up a little bit. Okay, so this is a painting uh, that I did as a demonstration for class. And I, I learned this from Nelson Shanks, I think. He said, you have to know how to paint everything because you, you could do, be doing a portrait. I'm doing a portrait of um, Laura. And Laura says, yes, but I want my vase in the portrait and I want my cat in the portrait and I want it uh, in front of my window that's an outdoor window with the landscape in the background. I've got to know how to do those things. So the classes I teach are portrait drawing and painting classes. I have a beginner at 10 immediate and intermediate to advanced, but we paint other things. And so I said, we need to do this. And in, in doing this, I also said, you in painting apples, as I said earlier, you're learning to make things round. I use the term rounded it. In fact, one of my students used that uh, on her Facebook page. I'm making something more rounded it. And I said, okay, you got the language going now. Keep working on the painting. Anyway, so this is just me showing them how to do uh, various images and making them round. Uh, the background, I wanted to show more atmosphere. So I was showing them how to do that. Um, and I was also showing them um, in many cases, I like to make this line very soft on the table so it'll go back. This is very short, so it'll come forward. This is soft it's down nice here, so that'll go back also. And the rest of the thing is just showing uh, grates and things, uh, round light going through. These are probably a little lighter than they would be, but it was a demonstration I wanted to show light going through uh, them. And, um, I had fun doing this. Now, one other thing I'll share with you that I shared in class too. Uh, this had varnish on it. I took the varnish off. Now, this looks too much like a tomato to me. And I said, I wanted to work on that some. And so I took the varnish off. I'm going to paint on that again. I'll put the varnish back on. That was a lesson for them also. This is how you take varnish off. This is how you put it back on. If you see something else, then take the varnish off, go back in, paint it. Uh oh, I made a mistake. Somebody's asked no, you a question. I, I want to know how you take the varnish off. You take, okay, what you do is like, they didn't know that you take Q-tips and you put a little um, curb on it and then you roll around it until you get color on your Q-tip and then you know you've gone far enough and you put that down and you get another Q-tip and then you put um, turp on it and then you take it off till you get down, you see a little color on it, you know you've done, um, you're at the point where you want to stop. That's seriously labor intensive. Right, and I'm lying through my teeth. So, what warning do you use? I'll tell you. What, what, what warning do you use? Do you use Gamera or? If I had used the bar warnings, that's how I would have done it. I use, Gam I use a Gambar, which means you can just easily take it off with a cloth. Yes. Oh, okay. Right, because uh, the other stuff I did just to throw you off and <laughs> make it seem like I knew something, and, and that is something I knew back in the older days, older days the way we did with Gambar, you use a cloth to take it off and you use Gamma Sol to take it off, the Gambar varnish. The Gambar varnish does not stick to the paint. And that's why, that's why, that's the only thing I use now. And what I've done is I would 
tell you all my secrets. I would um, take two or three paintings in my class that I have done demos, and I take the varnish off because I don't want to teach you anything that I have not done and seen how it works. And so I took the varnish off, I could paint on it some, and then I could put it, um, then I put the varnish back on. I know, make it change your religion. <laughs> <laughs> how long do you let it dry before you put the varnish on? Um, they say, um, okay, so let me, so when the painting is finished, they say you can let it, um, it dry to the touch and then you can put the uh, varnish on it. So you don't have to wait the six months or a year. I don't do that, uh, especially if I'm um, if I'm painting something that's a commission. You know, I wait a month, two, three, four months, something like that, and then I might put the varnish on. Um, but they said you can do it right to touch. Now, some of the things, if I'm just doing a demonstration for class, I might do that, and I'm sure I might wait maybe a month or something like that and put the varnish on. I won't just wait dry to the touch. And then when I take the varnish off, uh, I wait a while because I want to make sure it's really dry. I'll correct the painting however I want to correct it. And then I still wait a while, maybe a month, and then I'll put the varnish back on. It's a beautiful thing. Thank you. I had fun doing it. It's a good teaching aid to help me to show the stuff. You already, you already did my other one? Yes. I'll have to listen to the recording. Oh, okay. And who is this gentleman? <clears throat> Excuse me. Who is this gentleman? His name's Michael Best, and he work, He does the chuck wagons at the Booth Cowboy Festival. Oh, okay. This, okay. Maybe this I'll is, see up there. This is the second painting I've done of him. Oh, wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Look at all the uh, detail you've got in that beard. That is wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> You're quite welcome. It, um, actually, it actually hung at the Cartersville Gallery. He bought it. He bought it? He did. He bought, he bought the first one, then he bought this one. He told me he was going to have to charge me a sitting fee. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's, that's really smart. I got to remember that. Charge <laughs> you a sitting fee, and then you can deduct that from the uh, cost of the painting. <laughs> Donna, did he look, hi y'all, it's Ann Bailey. Did he look that much like Garth Brooks or did you make him look like Garth Brooks? He looks great. It's a great painting. Right, thank you. I don't, I don't, I can't even picture Garth Brooks right now. No, he looks like, it looked like him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like I, him. I, see, I see what you mean by he looks a little like Garth Brooks. I get that too. He also looks a little like, <clears throat> excuse me, the guy on, I'm trying to think of the name of, um, it's one of those talent programs, whatever. The voice. The voice is that where um, the, the people critique and then they, right. yeah, he looks like that guy on the, uh, on the, the voice. I that, so. Yeah, I don't know what it's called. But it, anyway, there's a guy there that looks like, looks like, uh, looks a little like him too. But that's, that's great. Uh, did you have any, I don't see anything that I would, say about this other than I think it's uh, I think it's great then what for some reason I'm having trouble hearing <laughs> you're having trouble hearing yeah okay then I probably said the wrong thing I said I think it's great and maybe I should have modified that a little bit <laughs> <laughs> You know, he just barely had his mouth open. I didn't know whether to close it or leave it open. It was just barely yeah, well, open. You know something, I, and that didn't bother me. I tell you why. Um, if you remember back um, a bunch of months ago, uh, we had a program with some people from um, Portrait Inc. And then there was another person from a gallery. Um, yeah, yeah. And one of the things they said is back in the olden days, uh, we wouldn't dare show the teeth because that was considered a snapshot, what have you. But no, now I, that, I agree. Second, please. I, I've heard that before. Don't show the teeth, but. But nowadays, she said it's different. She said because uh, some parents will tell you, I just spent $5,000 to correct my daughter's teeth. We're going to see some teeth. That's funny. So there are more teeth being shown in paintings nowadays 
than maybe they were in portraits, you know, done a while back. I enjoy uh, doing that. I understood uh, what the person was saying about how we did them before. And I don't want to do a, pers a, a, a painting of someone and it looks like um, a Polaroid, uh, a quick snapshot or something like that. Um, but showing some teeth and a beautiful smile and it's appropriate, then is appropriate, I think. Well, that's true because a lot of a lot of people, if I paint children, they say, oh, they look so unhappy because I, I don't like to paint them with a smile. I'm going to have to change my thinking on that. <laughs> well, I had to change mine. And when the uh, a young lady came to that program and said that, it made a lot of sense to me. And um, one of the things that I... I, I I'm appreciating as I get older, which is which is nice, well, it's something nice about getting older. I appreciate that as I'm getting older is that I have to decide what's right for me. And if that's really right for me and the way I want to paint it, then that's right for me. It may not be according to six other people, but it's right for me. And so if I want to see a smile with teeth, that's right for me. Well, too, I'm thinking it's about pleasing the client, but all of the ones I do are my grandkids. <laughs> my, my kids say, "Why do you? Why don't you paint them with a smile?" I need to. I need to try some of them. But it's it's really hard to me to paint teeth. You know. Yeah, well, you know something? I'm going to tell you. Carl Owens was one of my mentors back in the day, and Carl Owens would torture us. We'd go and we'd study with him and, and uh, Carl would say, let's see some teeth, let's see some teeth. And he said, you're not going to learn to paint them unless you're doing them. And then we'll be uh, setting up something. And he said, I don't see any hands. I don't see any hands. We go, huh? And so then <laughs> any hand. So it's one of those things. There's a young lady in my class and her name is a young lady in my class. Let's see. It's um, Beverly. Okay, I probably get that wrong. Anyway, I told her, I said, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to, okay, my oh, go. Hello, hello. I, I told Beverly, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do like they did back in the olden days. We're going to stand back far enough so you can see me. They would do like they did in the olden days. I'm going to paint uh, the portrait. And when I get to the teeth, I'm going to pass it on to her. And then she can do the teeth. And then she can pass it back. Me and if she had problems with like hair or something like that, and she can pass that on to me, and uh, then I will I will do them. And she said, "Right, uh, I haven't done that yet, but I, I think about it every time I'm doing tea." But Carl was helpful that you end up just having to do them. And after you've done, you know, two, three, four, then they're just like ears. They're, okay, ears were hard for me, and uh, Mark Shatov. Uh, he was looking at a painting and he he said this. He said, I can tell what you were in love with and what you were not in love with. And those things that you paid a lot of attention to, you really looked at, you were in love with. Your heart was in that. And he said, but, you know, um, look at the ear and I can tell your heart was not in that. So you paint a hundred of them and the next thing you know, ears are not a problem. That's a good way to explain it. Yeah. My, heart, my heart's not in ears either. <laughs> <laughs> but after you painted a hundred up, but it's going to be the same way with teeth. You know, paint a bunch of them or do what I do with my students. I say, get you a canvas, a big canvas, um, something like an 18 by 24, that's not huge. And use that and paint about like 20 different things of teeth. And don't worry about how great they are or what have you. Just get the practice of doing it. And the next thing you know, teeth won't be a problem. That's why I Beverly can do teeth for me, but not a problem. That's a good idea. Well, okay. So I guess, Ernest, do you have any words of wisdom to wrap it up? Do I have any words of wisdom to wrap it up? <laughs> um, only, only this. Um, and we, we said it the other day. Um, what's really wonderful is to watch people uh, grow. That's one of the reasons I still teach. I tell my students that I don't pay my bills uh, from the money I get from the classes that I teach. I say, I really enjoy there and teaching because I love uh, to have, um, like one lady is a retired nurse 
And uh, she said, I've always wanted to paint and do portraits. And now she's doing portraits of her kids or whatever she wants to do. One lady was a professor there at the university. And she said, I always wanted to paint and do portraits. And now I'm going to come to this class. And she came to the class. First night, she said, I'm a little afeard. So can I do a flower? And I said, OK, what are you going to do, a rose? And I started to say, that's harder than doing a portrait. But I left it alone. She did the flower. I said, as long as you do a portrait of a flower, she did. Yay. Uh, but now she's doing her kids, her grandkids. And I warned them. And I'm going to warn you guys, listen. Uh, if you've got like 10 grandkids and you do one, mm. all the rest of them will say, well, I guess grandma doesn't love me as much as she loves Josephine. So I, I hear that. I hear that all the time. I, I have 15 grandkids. They 16. all. 15. 15. Okay. Yes. 15. Wow. I can't keep up with them. So you're getting all kinds of I, I need to start over and go through them again. Great. <laughs> That's great. What's nice about that is years and years and years from now, uh, when you might decide to leave here, they're going to have something on their wall and say, my grandmother did that. That's just delicious. That's, I hope so. <laughs> I hope they feel that <laughs> That's all I have. Well, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Ernest. Thank, thank you, sure. everybody online, and thank you, everybody here. And um, no, November's coming up. We've got something in November, so check um, check the website for the details, and it'll be on Zoom too. Okay. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, thank you.